Hi, this is Jim Buett again. This lesson will feature uh, features that I've used with Bridge um, that contribute to a better workflow and helping to keep uh, uh, many, many uh, groups of images uh, kind of organized. And once again, you can see I've opened up to uh, my computer, have uh, numerous hard drives here, and why not? kind of show you how I work in finding uh, certain particular images. Uh, most of the photographs I keep are in this hard drive and as you can see we've got quite a few files and I frequently find myself going to this folder here and trying to uh, open this particular folder. And I wanted to just kind of uh, show you a feature that's very simple but is very helpful in always being able to uh, get to certain places that you maybe use on a regular basis. So I'm just going to show you again how to uh, uh, define a particular folder that's going to be something that you use often. So let's uh, say that we go to photo effects frequently and we want to be able to get this uh, quickly in our menu. And what I'm talking about is our little drop down menu up here that says parent or favorites. When you click and hold it, it's going to store certain folders there uh, you need. So let's just show you how to get to a new folder and how easy that is. All you do is open up the uh, favorites panel and over here we're going to drag in the folder that we want to be able to get to very quickly with one click. So you just click on the folder you want, drag it over here and we can close the favorites panel again and if I went back to the original uh, configuration where I was just looking at all the different hard drives, all I have to do is just come down to this file here, Photo Effects, and it takes me right to that particular folder. So very fast, very easy way to get there. Now I'd like to discuss how we add uh, new files to our computer. I'm going to go to my uh, Photos collection, and the main group of photos is uh, kept within the uh, previous folder here. And as you can see, we have quite a few uh, files that are coming in here. And one of the best ways to keep track of these is as you create a new folder, you want to give it kind of a very simple uh, name. So let's go ahead and create a uh, new folder. And you can see it right now, it's just labeled Untitled Folder. Normally what I'm going to do is put in the client's last name and usually put it in all caps. So we'll just put L-A-S-T for last name, underscore, and then I'll just put their first name in lower case. There you go. And typically I like to classify it whether it's a portrait or a senior. And let's say it's going to be a senior. So we'll just give it a simple code that we can easily find it. And then generally the date. So let's put our uh, year here and then possibly the month. There we go. And it's that simple to uh, uh, kind of put our files in there and we just hit enter and now it'll kind of fit in place uh, alphabetically but now within that folder we actually want to keep track of how the full you know the files are uh, put in when we're initially shooting the raws and then possibly the uh, JPEGs after we've edited the files. so here's a simple little way that I uh, came up with uh, keeping that organized if you come over here you see this particular folder I have basically empty folders with names a is for raw because that's generally the first files that you're shooting. Um, B is uh, for JPEG and that's usually the files that I've made a little bit smaller for presentation purposes. We use that also for creating the PDFs so it's a little bit faster when you create those uh, documents that the, we make catalog uh, proof sheets out of. When clients pick their particular pictures that we're going to work on, those new files go in and they're generally PSD layered files and so those are going to be stored here and when I finally am ready to send them to the lab I'll actually select all the PSDs that we're going to convert to JPEG and those will end up in this folder here D for lab because let most labs generally want the uh, files as JPEGs so once again a very simple way to get it so the easiest way to copy this to the other um, new folder you just select all of these under edit you do copy and then let's go down to that new folder that we just created here. There we go. So last. And then we're going to paste those into here. And so now we have empty folders within here. I can put all my raw images in this particular folder. Nothing's in there right now, but let's just open something just to give, give you an example. Here's all the initial RAWs. You can see the CR2 uh, suffix on that. Here's hers. We have the uh, edited 
um, uh, JPEGs that we've made for the PDF uh, catalog. Here are some of the final images that uh, were created. These are all the PSD layered files. And then finally the uh, flattened JPEGs that were sent to the lab. So it just kind of gives you an idea of how that works. And all these uh, files are uh, organized in the same fashion. Now I'd like to show you uh, why it's so helpful to uh, have your folders organized in this fashion. Let's take a look at uh, somebody that we've uh, photographed recently and how easy it is to find particular types of files that you want to get. So you can see she's got the folders here organized in a, a very, um, like I said, straightforward way. We have the PDF that was uh, created that we printed out that was part of the booklet that uh, they get to take home with them. So let's take a look at the uh, particular files and just kind of show you some real basic um, maneuvering that I might do as I'm editing and uh, going through things. Initially we have all the folders in here and what we do is we do pre-editing with um, you know camera raw to make adjustments for density, uh, exposure, color, saturation, um, you know darkening edges, lightening edges and the like. We even do some cropping as you can see all of these images here have uh, these little icons up above which indicate that they were cropped and they also had some other manipulation done to them. Now before the people are going to see these because if you open or click on one image and you come down here you can see the file size is very big. And if you start uh, showing people these in a little slide presentation, it's going to be a little bit uh, putsy and a little bit uh, take a little bit more time than you'd like. So what I did is I actually selected all the images, and then we ran it through our image processor, which we're going to have a complete uh, segment on just for that. And you just find that under Tools, Photoshop, Image Processor. And I'm just going to kind of give you the basics of it right now. Generally, we're just going to save it as one of three different types of files. You could save it as a JPEG or a PSD layered file or a TIFF. And right now we just want to save it as a JPEG, but what we do want to do is to resize it. We're actually going to resize it down to a 21 pixels by 21 pixels. Now a lot of people misunderstand this and think that we're cropping it. What we're doing is just fitting it within a box that's 21 pixels by 21 pixels meaning it's still going to stay vertical if it's a vertical image, and it's still going to stay horizontal if it's a horizontal image. It's just reducing the actual uh, size of the image. The uh, dimensions stay relatively the same. Uh, I know this is always a very confusing part for a lot of people when they first start on, uh, trying to understand what uh, the difference is between cropping and fitting to size. This is fitting to size. And I'll probably do a, a clear demonstration of just this particular aspect in this uh, program as well. So. When you hit run, it's going to process those images, open up the camera raw. It's going to resize it to fit within 2100 by 2100 pixels, and it's going to save it as a JPEG, and you can save it whatever quality level you want. And when you hit run, it'll process all of those files. And after it does that, here's that file that used to be 24 megabytes, and now if we come down to it, it's 483K. So considerably smaller, much easier to uh, you know look at um, when you uh, kind of select, uh, say, a group of eight images. Uh, you can come up here under Refine, and you can kind of scroll through these using the uh, arrow keys once again down here. And you can skip through very quickly. A very simple way to uh, present the images, and you can actually eliminate particular images. And narrow it down to your favorites. Uh, one of the things I like to do a lot is just hit the space bar and it brings the image in nice and close and I just step through with the right arrow or left arrow coming back again. And I'll do this through all the images. Um, if you want you can actually click on the image and it'll zoom in. Uh, very helpful if you're checking for clarity or something like this. Now you can see this looks slightly um, less sharp than the original because it is resized to be smaller. Uh, once again, when we go back and do the final edits, of course, we're going to work from the uh, regular size image. And if you just hit the space bar again, it just comes down to uh, the regular size. And frequently, somebody will ask me if I can, you know, just compare two of them. Well, if you just select two and then hit Command B, it lets you take a look at two images, and you can even set the magnifier on each image. So you can get uh, a very uh, close look at that. And then uh, you can actually do that to uh, three images if you like. 
once you get beyond three, it starts uh, kind of uh, making them a little bit too small and it's not as easy to work with, but it's still a great way to do some comparison between images. Because the one thing, uh, when you shoot a lot of different images, it's going to be uh, difficult for a client or yourself to actually edit out the, all those particular images. Now, frequently before a customer uh, comes in to view these uh, images in a slideshow, and I'll show you that in a moment, uh, we do pre-edit maybe several uh, images from them. This was one of our reps, so we uh, shot an awful lot of uh, different pictures because we wanted to uh, highlight some of the, the new backgrounds we had and some of the different styles and lighting that we've got. So when we went through it, we would be uh, working on a number of images. Now it looks like we have a number of different folders here, and the reason is we've had a couple of special requests. I had a sequence that we did with some specifically just dance images, and if you can see, we ended up with some you know very beautiful uh, final uh, files here. Some JPEGs, which were just the dance photos, just uh, reduced in size so we could use those. I did a sequence of just the shoes, so I had some available shoes to uh, cut and paste into some of the different uh, photographs if I liked. And then, once again, the uh, PSD layered files of some of the different images that I uh, did some special work to. Here you can see uh, one image that we ended up putting a different background in just to give it a, a different look. And uh, these, as I mentioned, are the PSD files. So let's just open one just to kind of show you what we're dealing with. And it just takes a moment to open it up. And then you'll see that the image, when I hit the F key, it kind of hides our background. We have uh, numerous layers from the initial uh, image on the bottom here to the uh, final image. That's right at the top. Uh, we've, like I said, changed the background so we can do uh, different things to it. But we'll get into a lot of that as we get into some of the uh, actual processing. So I'm just going to close this particular image and not save it. And so those are all our PSD files. And as we're getting ready to send these into the lab, most likely we're only going to work with certain ones of these, uh, not everything. We're going to go through and maybe select a particular grouping of them maybe just these few and once again when you come up to image processor this time I don't want to resize it because I don't want it to uh, uh, lessen the quality I don't want to run any actions on it and so when I hit run it's going to open up those PSD layered files and flatten them and save it as a JPEG quality 10 and we're all set to send that off to the lab and once those images are done I always say save in same location because then it's going to be in a folder and this one here is probably where I had those saved initially and looking at that right now this is where the JPEGs ended up and those typically I'm going to grab the ones that are going to go to the lab let's say it's this grouping here and I'll put those down into our final folder the D folder and these are the ones that will go to the lab and you can go through these to double check things by just hitting the space bar once again sorting through just double checking that everything looks proper and that you didn't miss anything uh, during your retouching and uh, frequently that's the best way to uh, do that and then at this time uh, just to show you how we would set up a slideshow I'm just going to uh, show you up here where we have the slideshow options Generally, you can, if you have multiple monitors, you can blank out the uh, other monitors. You can keep the slideshow running constantly if you happen to be, have this on display. And typically, a two-second dissolve seems to work very nicely. Captioning, generally, I have that turned off. Usually, I have it scaled to fit, so it'll kind of fit, it's with, uh, fit within the screen. And a dissolve seems to be one of the nicer, uh, cleaner um, ways to present this and the transition speed just means how slow or how fast the transition takes if you put it up here it's going to take quite a long time so keeping it about here is going to work good and let's just try this out and typically when i'm presenting this i will have music playing in the background uh, we will frequently have maybe a title slide that we might put in the front with her name on it something very simple and you can see how very nice uh, it uh, runs through the slides and at the end, it just stops. And that way, uh, you can uh, uh, know when you're finished with that. Uh, sometimes you people will uh, mix up the slides just to kind of have it go a little bit smoother and uh, different. But otherwise, I'm just going to stop this here. There we go. Otherwise, it would uh, play through all of the uh, slides. Uh, sometimes people just want to look at maybe three of them. And once again, 
you can just run a slideshow just from those few images. And then it'll end. So some very, very simple but very powerful presentation methods that are controlled under slides. And when you're ready to roll, you can hit done or hit play and have it start right then and there. So you're all set to uh, uh, do the work with that. <laughs>